Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to create callouts which respond to different text. The idea is so that you can create one callout style and reuse it for different text labels. Okay, so firstly starting off with a label, we're going to create a text layer called label. Uh, you can throw whatever text in this and then we're going to be adding a null object which we can call the controller. Next we need to add a background so we just need to put in a simple shape like a, a rectangle. Next we are going to create an effect called a slider that will be used to control the width. So just add a slider control to both the background and the null object. And then we're going to just rename this to padding. You can copy and paste it on so you can just keep the names consistent. And then we're going to parent the, the background slider to the controller slider. Next, we're going to be creating an expression which will allow us to take our text width and match it to the background, essentially. So firstly, we're going to be typing out an expression uh, which is title equals this layer. So we're going to find the actual specific layer that we're trying to match. So in this case, it's the label, hence why we have to rename it. We are then going to use the source layer, which is the text layer, to create the actual height and width, uh, combining it with our padding. So as you can see, there's uh, expressions come up on the screen, uh, which you can pause and copy down. I've done it in this way. There are different ways, but my approach is I like to have customization. So I like to add and minus different values to the actual width and height. So by adding the padding and that zero, you can add additional values to increase the amount of space between the text and the background. So as you can see, there was a snap when I pressed enter. This was the actual rectangle following suit to the text layer. So now if we click on the controller and increase the width, it automatically scales up. So the benefit of this is if you change the text, it will match. Let's quickly build a layer and show you how it works. So if we just centralize the background and centralize the text. Now we're going to just quickly add a call out line just so that we can use this as an indicator. So I just add a white stroke on a three point line. So you can actually duplicate the background layer and use it to create a stroke. Uh, the idea is if you duplicate it, you can add different parameters to change the visual approach while keeping the it matching the same expression. You're able to actually customize it by adding different values like plusing or minusing the width and height to create a slightly different effect. So for this one, I'm going to be using a gutter effect. So there's a white stroke with a little insert before we get to the actual main background. So now if we change the text, we can literally see uh, the background responding. So we won't actually have to keep recreating the titles. Next on the actual stem callout that we started to build, uh, we're going to add a points to null script. Uh, the benefit of this is it allows us to control the path without having to actually manually go in with a pen tool and move things around. And it also means we can parent things to specific points. So if we just move this into the center, as you can see, there's three different boxes being added. So if you drag one, it moves it about. So from here, we can just start building the label animation. So if we add a trim paths and just a scale up the start and end points, it means that we can get that sleek animation. Next, we're going to just be creating a quick little indicator, which will show where the thing is actually pointing to. Uh, these can be parented to the third null object. So you can play with the animation for this, uh, these indicators, we can have like a little scale up and we can tweak those. So if you're using scale, you can just change those as you wish. So for this, I'm just using a simple uh, easy ease, but I'm just gonna increase the speed. So it sort of extends the animation as well as uh, increasing the value. So it curves up, goes slightly larger and then back to the actual original value that I wanted.
So if we just offset the actual animation, the actual label background, uh, we can just delay the start so we can get the indicator to start first, have the sweeping stem pass through, and then that connects to the white stroke on the outside. So if we just copy that same trim paths from the stem onto the stroke, we can just use the same animation and we just have to add offsets. And then for the background, we just have to add a simple opacity on and off. Uh, slightly offset. So we just have to just play around with this and make sure it flows nicely. So where you can get the start from the stem to hit the outer stroke and make a continuous loop. The benefit of adding the slider allows us to actually play with the spacing around the words. So if you want to increase the box, if you increase the scale of the typeface, it will actually increase the entire comp whereas if you change the scale of the specific type layer you are able to actually change just the type itself this allows you to add more gutter space on the label so let's just change up the coloring and then again you can just change the typeface and it will all keep in the same fashion so we don't have to actually recreate anything it's more about just creating a sort of template which you can then alter so again as you change the words you will find that the offset will be slightly different so you just have to match this by pressing control you get a more refined slower scroll whereas if you press shift when you're scrubbing on the offset it goes really fast so it just helps you find what you're looking for the benefit of using these boxes for the stem allows you to move certain bits around I find that using three points it works best as you are able to really just hone into what you're trying to look at. It also means that you can create a diagonal offset without having to add additional points and take them away. When, like for instance here, where you can just see it goes straight down. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select everything apart from the things that already are parented and the control and link everything to the control. The benefit of this is it means we have a single unit that we can move around and change the placement but it also means we can actually flip um, on the horizontal so things can be animated differently depending on what's happening on the screen. One last effect that I like to add to my labels or my callouts is adding a fill um, onto the controller. The fill effect basically adds a single solid color to uh, an object or background or shape. So if we grab this and copy it with uh, property links and then paste it onto the background as well as the, the fill indicator, it means that we can control the color from the entire label from just one point. So as you can see, there's different elements are being changed automatically. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe. Thanks.